Ya estamos live. Ok. Ocupamos algo para poner el teléfono ahí donde... Así está bien. Bueno, póngala así. Ahí está. Ahí sí. Ok. Ya estamos, ya estamos. Ahí. What's up? What's up? Nadie está uniendo. Ah, ¿sabes qué? Voy a... Uy. Ya, ya. Ahí. Ya está bien. Ok. Dímelo, Chami. ¿Qué es la que hay, hermano? Dímelo, Chami. No, aquí estamos haciendo un live. Mira, este es mi hermano Chami desde hace mucho. Esta es mi mujer, Alejandra. Aquí estamos en México. Ah, ¿estás trabajando hoy? No, pues está bien. Massachusetts. Está bien, hermano. No, este, estamos haciendo este live porque voy a leer un poco de mi libro. Aquí estamos trabajando también. Sí, pues aquí pongamos para esto, entonces. Un placer, hermano, ya sabes. Órale. ¿Cómo? Ah, está bien, está bien. Sí, sí, lo que dices. Bueno, chao, Chami. <laughs> ok, the preface of the book. I'd like to start by telling the story behind this first article. A righteous man that went by the name of Airborne One Percenter was a man that I called my brother and was also a member of another One Percent MC. He contacted me on his birthday and asked me to write an article about the determining factors in the value of one's patch. He was someone I loved and respected very much. So for me, it was an honor and a privilege to write something at his request. I worked very hard on writing this article over the next several hours, but sadly, by the time I sent it to him, he had been murdered. I won't get into detail. All I can say is that he asked me to write this article for a reason. I only hope I did it justice. Fly free, airborne one percenter. So the article is The Value of the Patch, written on January 3rd, 2021. It says, Good morning, MC. Was it that the question? It says, Good morning, MC World. Miklo One Percenter here wishing everyone a happy Sunday from Monterey, Mexico. I got a special request last night from someone that I love and respect very much in the One Percent MC world. He asked me to write about a subject very near and dear to my heart, the value of one club's patch versus another's. My philosophy on this subject is really quite simple. The man makes the patch. If you stand three men from three different clubs side by side in comparison, all three have patches, all three have a diamond-shaped 1% patch on their chest, and they all ride a Harley. The average citizen may not be able to tell the difference between the three, but please believe that everyone that knows anything about the MC world can see exactly who each one of them are behind their patches. The man on the left has a brand new set of colors that he ordered off the internet. His vest is still creased at the hips and his shoulder and shoulders as it is brand new. His patch is a cheesy internet depiction of a skull or a skeleton or one of the options that was available on the website he used to design his colors. The font on his rockers is the exact same internet font used in hundreds of other cheesy internet made patches by other groups trying to live out a TV fantasy. There is not a single hand drawn design on his colors. It's all computer art. He obtained all his stereotypical information on the 1% culture from various clickbait websites created by people trying to cash in on biker culture. 
He will end up meeting a real one percenter at some point and get so scared that he'll give up on his biker phase and move on, telling all his white collar buddies about how he was a badass biker back in the day. His patch ain't worth a fuck. He knows it and everyone else knows it too. So, on to the guy in the middle. He's a very special kind of poser. He sports the patch of a well-known old school 1% club that has built a reputation over the years for committing senseless violence at a constant rate. A club of overcompensating bullies that roll gas station to gas station looking for victims. But they'll only attack when the numbers are in their favor. He paid good money to skip the prospecting phase and obtain his 1% patch. This will be a short chapter in his life. Every move in his life has been geared toward his tough guy image. He doesn't care about brotherhood. He doesn't care about history. He doesn't care about the value of his patch. He just knows that it's a popular patch that opens doors and scares people. He has a brand new souped up Harley. He keeps his patches really clean on his designer brand vest. He works very hard not to let his bike get his Jordans dirty. If you say anything about how fake he is, he'll get the other dudes that paid money to wear the same patch he wears and they'll attack you with a pack mentality. That's the closest to brotherhood any of them will ever come. Then one day they'll get in trouble with law and denounce their club affiliation as they point at each other in the courtroom to get lowered sentences. His patch ain't worth the fuck. It probably used to be worth something long before he ever wore it, but it has since become tainted and contaminated. He's a cancer to true 1% culture. Now, on to the real 1%er, the man on the right. The man on the right has a patch that was drawn by the hand of his club's founders. As you look at him from head to toe, his appearance tells his story. His hair is long, he wears a worn out faded bandana to keep it out of his eyes. He's dressed for the long ride. Behind the tough skin of his face, you see the heart of a good man in his eyes, a man of honor. His patches are dirty and faded from all his time on the road, wearing them in all types of weather. His old comfy jeans sport a chain from his belt loop to his back pocket. His boots look like they've been through a war. He's a true one percenter. He worked very hard to be able to wear his patch with pride, whether he's part of an older club or is someone that founded a club himself. He's a true one percent brother through and through. As you listen to him speak, you can hear the genuine love he has for his brothers, his club, its history, and his journey to become the true one percent brother he is. That's something you can never buy with money. What he has is worth more than all the money in the world. He, his brothers, and the brothers that came before them all stood in defense of their patch and will forever stand in defense of its honor and worth. Nobody can buy his patch. He knows it and everyone else knows it too. Of the three men, his patch is worth the most. He needn't worry whether people see that his patch is worth more than the other two. Anyone that matters in the MC world knows that of the three, he is the true one percent. The moral of the story, if you respect this culture and want to be part of it, then do it for the right reasons and do it the right way. My right way may be different than the right way you've heard elsewhere. But as I've said before, what I say in these articles is coming straight from the heart of a true one percent. Thank you for reading. Mon much love and respect always, Miklo 1%, and Los Perros forever, forever, Los Perros. So that's the first article in my book, The Spirit of the 1%. We just thought we would do a quick live reading. We were reading it last night and said, hey, we ought to do a live reading that first article. I wrote that article here in Mexico at the request of my brother Airborne before he passed away. Uh, he asked me to write that article, and uh, in less than 24 hours, he was gone. I sent him the article, 
and I asked him if I had done it justice, and he never answered me, so he never got to read the article. But that was it right there. We got nine people watching. So anyway, we just thought we would do a live real quick to uh, read that first article. If you don't already have my book, you know, feel free to order it off Amazon or hit me up, and I will uh, get you set up with a signed copy. Diablo, hay un, un par de gente viendo. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. From me, Clo. Y que tengan feliz día. Bueno, no solo hoy. Pues sí. Saludos de Miklo y Alejandra desde Monterrey, México. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. We love you all. I believe you did it justice. Thank you, man. Thank you. Much love and respect to you as well. So, not a battery, man, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to read y'all that first article, so. Para, Los Gypsies, what's up, Los Gypsies? Much love and respect, always. Hay para los que quieran adquirir su libro, y, ¿por qué? Por, ah, si para quieren, autógrafo. Si lo quieren autografiado, ¿cuál es la dinámica? No, pues que me hablen y, y este, ahí, ahí vamos a hablar de cómo me, me pueden pagar, me pueden pagar por Paypal o por este Cash App, cualquier de las dos cosas. Y ahí arreglamos, pues. Así, el, el mío ya está firmado. Uh, yeah, this is her signed copy, as you can see. Anybody that wants an autographed copy, hit me up. We'll get you set up. And, uh... Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching our live. Thank you for uh, listening to me read this first article in my book. There's uh, over 50 articles in this book. And, uh, you know, like I said, I hope I did them all justice. And, dímelos, ese psiquiatra, mi hermano. Que la que hay, hermano. Feliz 14. Ese es mi hermano, sí, 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 ese psiquiatra de Bogotá, mm. Colombia. Saludos. <risa> Saludos, hermano. Que tengan sí. buen día. Saludos a todos los conectados y pues ese fue el libro de mi hombre. De... <risa> <risa> no, pues. Muy bueno para escribir. Sí, pues. Que tengan buen día. Saludos, carnal. <risa> Que tengan excelente día y, y ahí nos vemos. No, pues ahí ya terminamos.